as I get, get some sort of music flowing while just say, we'll just take you know what? we're I'm waiting. Okay, I don't know why I went live saying test, but this is the heck hounds versus the Chengdu chats. Oh, they're in a custom. Oh, 
is about five o'clock. We should be getting ready to start here in just a few minutes. When I'm currently ready, just waiting on the teams to sort everything out, get their starting lineups through and through. And hopefully I don't mess up anybody's names. I thought I turned off chat. I guess not, but I suppose I need it open to type. Makes sense. Uh. Yep. Just waiting on the teams to give the go ahead. And then we'll be into the first match. First map will be Busan, and by the looks of it, the lineups starting for Hangzhou will be Rodeo, Red, Yellow, Deadstock, Reed, and Core, Corey. That one I'm not sure about. And then on the side of the Chads, you have Poi, G3, Lights Out, Chad slash Applesauce, Hulk, and waiting on their sixth. Just waiting to get underway. They're also getting their spectators sorted out.
we still seem to be waiting on just one more player right now, and that would be on the side of the Chads. But just for you who haven't tuned, or let me start over. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, on the side of the Hackhounds, the starting lineup will be Rodeo, Red, Yellow, Deadstock, Reed, and Core. Corey, and then on the side of the Chads, the five that we have in right now are Poi, G3, Lights Out, Chad slash Applesauce, and Hulk. Still waiting on who are they going to throw in as their sixth player, but this is going to likely be a possibly daunting task for the Chads to upset the headcounts, considering that they have gone so undefeated so far in this 4.5 season that we have so far. While wow, the Chads actually just picked up their first win last night against the LA Inferno. So, Chads on a bit of an uprise compared to their previous form, as they're now 1 and 2. But it's still a daunting task going up against the Heckhounds. Okay, and they've gotten their last person thrown in. It looks like it will be Rofty. So we should be starting any minute here soon. Looks like we might be getting started here in Both teams are ready. Should be getting underway in now. Now traveling to the south. And we'll be starting here on Busan downtown. Very interesting map. Can be a very snowbally map as far as I I have experienced, while well, Dive is preferably fabled here, we know that tanks, spe spe uh, specifically main tanks, have not been having a lot of fun on this patch. So 
we'll see what each team decides to run here as we'll find out in about seven seconds. Alright, it looks like we're going to see Double Bubble coming out from the Chengdu Chads and Ryan Zarya from the Heckhounds, followed up by a Pharmacy, a McCurian, and an Ana. While on the side of Chengdu, they'll be followed up by a Reaper, an Ash, and then an Ana Lucio. Um, this will really be up to Applesauce to shut out Yellow on Five, on the Fara four, and Dex Deadstock two, to do the same until lights out on the McCree. One. But here we are underway. Both teams opting to go down down the middle. A little bit of poke being exchanged, but Chengdu getting out first and blocking off the choke with the Winston bubble. Oh, damage me trade off, and Rodeo is the first to fall. Rodeo or Yellow does dive in onto the back on top of Ch Chad, hoping to get the pick. It does so. Fight is even, but he's lost his mercy. Going back to the team, and he loses his life as a result. It looks like this should be Chengdu's flip, or take of the point. They do so in a fairly non-difficult fight. The only disadvantage to that is that nobody has really gained any ultimates, and we probably won't see any until the next fight breaks out. Alright, Rodeo surging forward with the help of his Zarya bubble. Huge anti comes in, limiting Deadstock, Yellow, and almost Rodeo as Chengdu secure another fight. Right. We see any switches to hopefully break through, or are we just gonna see them push through with these ultimates? We have a nano boost on the side of the Heckhounds and fast approaching the Primal Rage and the Death Blossom inside of the Chads. Still just exchanging minor poke. The Nano goes in onto the Winston Primal and boy gets one, gets two. Followed up quickly by by Lights Out on the Reaper, killing the Reinhardt in the process. And they are just pushing them back towards spawn hoping to get some final cleanup. But because of Lucio, they are able to disengage and not suffer any losses. Now, with it being nearly 80% here, the headcounts really have to not get hit by that grab, and it's just that simple. The blossom and the grab results in What's going to be a very likely first point for Chengdu, unless they can swap to some sort of high mobility to reach the point first. Nope, and Chengdu come out with a statement 100% to zero against <laughs> against the Heckhounds. Yes, Stonewall. Rodeo was the first to fall. Now we'll see, does Hangzhou make any changes here to hopefully get some percentage on the board and get their get their train moving really? Because right now they are just getting shut out by this Ash Reaper double bubble. Five, and we are seeing a little bit of adjustment. We're going to see Lucio Mercy come out from the Heckhounds and adapting to the f to the Reaper instead of the Farah. It looks like they're both going to be trying to meet at the drum. Let's see who's the first to fall this time. Rodeo is surging forward and unfortunately does fall first off of just the sheer pressure and lights out. It's just He's just in the back line not getting any of the attention that Spark wants to, or Spark, that the Heckhounds want to afford to him, and as a result, we see the Chads pick up first tick yet again. Now the, qu the question is, where do they hold, and how does the Heckhounds adapt to this? 
Chad getting a little bit over ambitious, way out from his team, and loses his life as as Hang Chao decides, let's just charge on a point and see what we can do. Boy engages onto the backline, but gets heavily punished, and we'll see. We'll see Rodeo hit him. Charge into the back lane, but lights out, brings one, one's back, brings two back for his team, and despite losing two very early on, Chengdu is turning the fight in their favor. With Corey and Yellow and now Reed falling, they maintain control of the point and did it with only the nano boost. It's quite impressive, actually. But this is going to be the big ultimate fight. We have we have yellow coming up on ult. We have deadstock coming up on ult, as well as Reed and Core will most definitely get their ult this time around. But yep, and just the grab death blossom pulls out yet again. Now, what we're going to be looking for is what Poi does does with his Primal Rage this time around. As they look to secure a full 200% zero shutout. Dives right up on top of the... And kills Deadstock just from the anti nade, which was huge. And Chengdu are just cleaning up the point. Yellow pops his ult, but does not manage to get a pick. Right now, we've just seen some contesting of the point, but Rodeo lands a shatter onto the Zarya and is able to clean up with help from Yellow, and Hang Zhao managed to flip it. As Yellow picks up multiple following his Death Blossom kill. Or, pop Death Blossom. Now the question is, we've seen we've seen Chengdu have the have control, but now now Hang Zhao does, and we'll see how they respond by having to go into a defensive position. We're main, mainly looking how this Lucio decides to respond and when to use B. Nano gets invested onto lights, and both Reapers find a pick on. There there comes the B. Hang Zhao is doing everything that they can to keep this point in their own control, but Chad picks up yellow, and this looks like it could go in the... It's gonna go to the way of the Chads if... But they do have the Ryan Zarya alive, but they're just getting pressure from every angle, but the Reaper dies to the Lucio. And we see the Coalescence get popped out. There, it's just so much of a brawl here on top of the point, but Spark is... Hang Zhao is maintaining their lead and managed to fight off an attack that seems like was going in the Chad's favor. But it's going to get difficult here as we see Lights Out has his Death Blossom again. How does he... How does he find value with it this time around? Poi goes in for the immediate dive and out comes the grab. Can you imagine? Here comes the Death Blossom. Picks up three, but does manage to get traded. But it does seem to still be going the way of the Chad's favor. 99 to 97%. Can anyone touch? It's no. And we will see Chad's take go one up here in the series. Some combos coming out from the side of the chads. To be expected. All right, and we'll see what what does yellow er, 
what does what does the Hackhounds want to respond with as far as map goes? I believe this next map choice is Assault. So if they want to play away from this sort of rush, almost dive-esque sort of playstyle that the Chaz are playing against, what do you do to counter it? Because Volskaya heavily favors rush. But they could always easily transition this over into a dive, so... Okay, they d they just come out and save Volskaya. <laughs> so we're going to see that as the choice from the Spark for the next map. And it looks like we're not going to see any subs come out from either side, and we're just going to go straight on into it. Traveling to Volskaya Industries. Initiating match. Likely to see from either side. Granted, Hackhounds are defending first, so this is the this is the hero set we are going to see from them. We're going to see both the Farah and the Reaper this time instead of the McCree. Still the same tank line, still the same support line. At least for the majority of Busan. But the question is, do the chats actually run out on this? It's possible. But he could also just see some spawn room shenanigans, seeing the Genji and the Hoggin Ball. Nope, this is what both teams are gonna run at, run with. As we get here underway, Poi comes rolling on through, does lose some health, but is likely not gonna be taking any real damage. Retreats back to his team, back to the enemy front line. Yellow mainly just getting in some shots. And the Yellow manages to take out both him and the other far with a single rocket as the fight is breaking out onto the point. Yellow does get rezzed, but we will not see the same for, Ab for Chad. We have Genji in the back line on on rodeo as yellow picks off now the now the enemy mercy so this pharmacy comp is just broken apart but ana gets picked by g3 and gets the nano and picks up rodeo and is likely just gonna clean up this fight here on the point but as we say that boy does fall down lights out does get it's just dead stock left but he's doing a decent job of stalling but it still does go in the way of the chats Despite some good picks from Yellow on both halves of the pharmacy at different points in the time, they they unfortunately do lose it. And we'll see 5 minutes and 30 seconds, almost 40, come out for the side of the chats. And how do they want to attack it? Poi just rolling through, hope, likely looking to get his ult. As we see, just the air battle in the sky sort of ensue. But G3 picks up the Mara. And the dash goes in from the Genji, trying to get kills with the blade, and they're just all out assaulting this enemy backline. But Reed, or Red does find yellow, or lights out, but Chad picks up two in response. This is just a scrappy, scrappy fight. Grad, Grab gets invested in yellow, pops his ult, and it's just the pharmacy left on the point. This is likely the end of, yes, likely the end of Chengdu's here in the time in the fight, but Rofty does manage to get out with some help from Hulk as they don't lose the mercy or have to invest Valk to get out. 
So that's that's some save time down there on that point, but still they have to outlast us for another four minutes and thirty seconds. And how will Hang Zhao how will Hang Zhao do it? They have they have the Earth Shatter, they have the nano. It they could very likely win the next fight, but they do have to go up against four ults on the enemy side. It's a big shatter getting both the enemy tanks. But the Ana does fall on the side of it. But does man oh, does manage to get rezzed as again as Lights isn't quite able to finish off his target. The Nano comes out onto the far up, picks up one with the Barrage, but not too much other. Nano's invested in onto the Reinhardt as he's just charged, trying to charge down anything in his sight, really. But he's now left out to dry as Chad's have picked up three kills and they have many, and now out comes the Genji Blade, gets, gets the Zarya, gets gets the mercy and this is looking like a very hard defense here for for Hang Zhao as they just want to maintain control of the point for as long as they can whittle down that three minute plus time bank but lights out is just cleaning up kills here on the Genji and now the grab gets invested and the barrage comes out but only manages to find the wrecking ball Such a chaotic fight there at the end. Now how does... <laughs> Here it goes again. How does Hang Zhao respond to this? This very... I'd say almost individualistic comp from, from the Chads, but they're playing fairly coherent. They're not... They're not solo ulting. They're not really fighting away from each other. They're huddled up despite all these sort of heroes being I want to go in by myself and get kills but they're playing this very very well Ready for battle. so it's just how do we see the spark adapt to this and seeing Hog Sigma come out is definitely an adaptation arguably Attackers probably stronger than the Rhein Zarya right now as I did say earlier, the main tanks not having a lot of fun right now and are actually fairly weak. Greetings. Hello. All right, but Chengdu also make the adaptation and play the Sigma Roadhog on the defense. We will see the same DPS lineup from Chengdu, but not the same from the Spark. Or Spark. From the Heckhounds, as they decide to roll with the McCree this time instead of the Reaver. Just have the exchange of poke here in the choke, as nobody really wants to contest contest this part going forward. We're trying to find an off angle, and it looks like, like Red did have to have the hook come out, but Yellow does end up picking, getting a pick on the Mercy with Dead Suck to follow on the Genji. It is somewhat traded out as as Chad does get the pick on the enemy Vara. But as we're ensuing, the the fight sort of just breaking out on point, and it's I be believe we're still two in favor of the of the Heck Hounds as G3 is likely to fall after getting hooked by Red, and it's just Hulk left who. Is looking to make a <laughs> make an escape from the Roadhog, and the Roadhog finds lights out as a result of switching his target. And that's a very good time bank. Time bank. I. They might. Did they have a minute more, or did was it just the exact same time bank from from each team? As we continue here on Traskaya. see Chad pick up dead stock firing rockets into the back line and boy making the switch onto the Reinhardt and just wanting to push, push the enemy front line dead stock does get res but lights out is going in with the nano boost gets slept as he's still done he's still done the not necessarily the damage but he's distracted them long enough to 
to at least scare them into the other side of his team. And Red does get the pick on to Chad, but he'll likely be back before before the headcounts can proceed. And despite that, headcounts have five, likely six ults on this coming into this fight, and we could see them all. The lift comes out from Rodeo, does manage to get the Mercy, Deadstock does finish it off, and three kill four kills come out for, for Hung Zhao, and it's only Poi left in the back line. And if on the back of four ults, we could be seeing we could be seeing a better time bank come out here from the headcounts. Mercy does get the contest and the far is quickly shut down by Deadstock. But they have gotten the stall characters out onto the point with a May being swapped in. Hulk does manage to find the Ana. And the chats are actually cleaning up the fight and denying the <laughs> denying all the advantage that the that they're that the ults on the side of the headhounds gave them. Chad just cleaning up on the tracer, and we're looking at if headhounds do finish, it's gonna be under the time of the chats. Now, despite them lose losing that fight, they did manage to to get two ticks. So any further, they just need one tick. It's a decent spot, it's not the spot they would have liked to have been in though. Especially with this May building up to her her freeze and the way that that Hangzhou wanted to play this. Yeah, they're just gonna get frozen up. But we see the Roadhog fall, not necessarily, didn't have to fall if they wanted, but they did manage to get the Vara. So a lot of their damage is in and Hangzhou just decides to reset. And Chad does manage to get the exit kill on on the McCurry, so that's going to be even farther stagger. Then we're looking at the next fight happening at about the two minute mark, and that's where if you want any swaps, you've got to do it now. Otherwise, you've got to stick through it all and just try and build your ults. Chad does manage to get a headshot onto the Ana, but isn't able to finish, finish off his target as he's pressured out by the Vara. And Poi pops pops his Primal Rage in the enemy backline, trying to get the Roadhog off the edge. He managed to do, do so without getting hooked into the pit himself. This, including the Mega Wall, has got to de be delaying the Hung Zhao, or Hung Zhao's um, push just really can't fight this 5v6. There a minute and 30 left, there's not much time. They can't make any mistakes if they want to finish this point. The Maywall comes out, doesn't catch anyone, is quickly retracted. But Yellow dives in, gets the May, but not much else if they can... Deadstuck gets two with the Deadeye, but one gets res back, and if they can't push forward, they're not getting much out of this. The grab comes out from G G3 and the shatter from Rodeo, but this fight is possibly over. Even though Rodeo does have the nano on him, there's just not there's not anything to hit in front of him. Nano comes out on the boy. So he was slept for a second. He has another primal going after the Farah and the McCree in the back line does manage to find find the McCree Rodeo trying to get out with a charge kill but just manages to get out with his life. Yellow trait gets a kill onto lights and Reed almost pushes Poi off the side of the edge but not quite as I said that the sleep dart gets the <laughs> gets the environmental kill onto Poi and this is looking finishable as nobody's contesting the point and what the mail comes out and this could be devastating if they manage to get the follow-up that they want and they manage to to do that killing killing the Ana and the Reinhardt only four left on the point and this is gonna be driven into overtime so if spark can or spark, 
keep on doing it. If the headcounts can finish this, they're only hope they're only looking to draw for this map. But two more picks come out for for the Chads as there's a, and another pick for the Chads as the kills just keep on coming in and in, and there's only the ball left on the point. Yep, and. The Chads do it. They take map number two, giving them a 2-0 lead and match point. We will see Chad pick up play of the game with some forest sharpshooting. Very nice shot onto the Mercy. And does man manage to the Ulting Reaper as well as the Reinhardt. The Chads just seem like they're on a roll right now and it's difficult to stop them. We'll see no swamps on the side from the Chads ag again as makes sense they're just playing their game and not letting the Hackhounds do what they want to do. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Looks like we might see one swamp, but Hackhounds got to rally and do something if they want to keep their perfect record so far. But right now, it is not looking great. They'll have to win three maps on the back, and it looks like Chads will be taking their five-minute break. Or we'll be taking a five minute break. So in the meantime, I'll put the music on, back on and we can just relax. Because it, se it seems like the headcounts need it. Like, that the headcounts are doing things right. It just seems like the there's something missing. They're just not quite finishing off the targets that they want to, or... Or they're just getting hard-pressed and doing some a little bit of over-ulting, like we saw on their, on their first push. They used four ults in, like, five seconds, and they didn't... They only had support ults left over to deal with... to, to deal with the recontest. It's unfortunate, but yeah, just a little, it seems like a little bit of lack of communi communication from their side, or just some over eagerness, eagerness to be, to be the star player, really. Oh, the music did not go back. That is my bad. are looking very good right now. Now as far as MVPs, it's it's hard. I don't I don't know who I'd give it to. You guys are all playing so well together right now. It it like no one's really getting caught out too much aside from Chad here and there, but he's returned with a lot of picks on his own so it's very difficult to try and pick someone as your star player for the map because you're just all performing so well now for it looks like, okay, the Hackhounds 
have looked to have chosen Rialto as their map pick for for this last map and what does that exactly entail we're probably still going to see Farah come out from both sides and I think Heng, Heng Xiao really needs to find the solution for the far that just keeps on getting pick after pick after pick in their in their back line and they're it seems like yeah it just seems like the far isn't necessarily being shut down and if they are if they're devoting too many resources to where boy or g3 or lights is just returning with all al with alternate fire from the side and picking them off. And Heng Zhao's willingness to just group up and play as a team is sort of feeding right into Chengdu's favor almost because the far just gets so much ult charge after just a single rocket because there's so many targets to hit and they're not getting as much value on their side with everyone being more spread out on the on the defense so it's just <laughs> it's almost a little bit of a play style difference and just Chad's turning up. to do a little bit of self-promotion but I am here very close to the 50 follower mark so if you guys want to give a follow that would be much appreciated and I will be trying to sh stream as many of these games as I can and here we go right up into the next right up into the next match on Real so they well didn't done. make yeah. any subs but we go into Rialto otherwise, just the little bit of the, of the time break. We saw Deadstock there, tease a little bit of the Ash. I think that would actually help a lot with trying to deal with this far that they just keep on getting picked off by, but... <laughs> we see a little bit of trolling here in the chat. <laughs> Asking for the Bastion. see what will we see we will see the ash the fara come out will we actually see bastion come out i don't know but they didn't change last time <laughs> so and with the cement we very well <laughs> might see the Bastion Sim come out from the Chads as Hung Zhao looks to be sticking with their standard tank line and support line while just making the switch for the Ash instead of the McCree or the Reaper. Bastion's track come out and just raining hell down below, but they do need to push the point. They need to leave somebody on the cart. Otherwise, this is just all for naught. We have the far picking shooting rockets in from the side. They're playing back and out of the way. It's not a bad read from Kang Zhao. Because we really want to see Deadstock here get up almost annihilated by the Bastion actually, but he needs to get the pick on the on someone here. Lights out gets the kill on Deadstock in turret form. And Yellow is putting in shots from the side. Can he finish off Boy? It's very close, but he gets the he gets He 
gets the Baptiste, which is Mega. No immortality from the news, but he flies right out into the turrets and just gets beamed down. And Angel or, might not even be able to contest this here at the end, and we'll just have to concede and defend second point. comes the change from the Bastion out onto the Genji, and we'll still see the double shield. The Flights Out just gets annihilated by the far out in the front, maybe not recognizing where they were. Rodeo does have his Shatter. Will we see something massive come out from him? But he needs his team to help follow up on it. Shield's falling low. The annoying thing about this Shatter, though, is that he's gonna have to dodge two shields to do it. And Ch three, if we want to count, if we want to count Chad Shield as well. G3 does find the find something in the yellow, and Rodeo does get the nano boost, pushing forward, wanting to get this Earth Earth Shatter off. And he, does, he leaves his team open, and the third shield co comes out for the Chads as yellow does does get res. Rodeo almost falls to the beam. It's just a war of attrition with the ults right now, and the Chads are doing a better job of reading it. Almost saved by the Earth Shatter, but it's not quite enough. But it, it has pushed them back. Rodeo does manage to punish two kills, and Deadstock gets the pick on to the Mercy. And just as some. It seems like they've lost a little bit of their ground, and will make the change off of the Reinhardt to the Winston, getting a little bit more into the Chad's comfort fix. We'll see how this ensuing fight breaks out, because Lights Out gets moved off the edge by by the Concussion Missile. And they've opted into full-on dive now, with G3 coming back on the D.Va. Very interesting, considering their DPS lineup does not mesh well, and Yellow just get just cleans up the back line. Chad goes off the edge, like he's you would hope to see him swap here despite them being near ults. They just need a little bit of synergy here between their DPS and their tank line. As Yellow finds another boop off the edge. Yellow here has very Yellow and Rodi have very much here secured some sort of Safety here on the first point as Chad makes the swap onto the onto the Ash. Still, it's still a little bit of a disconnect here. We're, we'll see how successful this is. But we do see Yellow almost has his ult. We have multiple ults. So Yellow goes down to the McCree and the far drops. Are we going to see what lights out? Gets three and has. Almost, gets four and has almost pretty much single-handedly won this fight for him, but Deadstock Bob came out and sort of just stalled long enough for them to not get as much point progress as, as the chance wanted. And land, the Rodeo lands a massive shatter onto the back line, but doesn't have too much follow-up, and then there's Yellow. He comes up with his barrage, and Hong Zhao managed to clean up the fight. Maybe a little bit later than they would have wanted, but... The fact that they cleaned it up is mainly what they would have been looking for. And hit, looking at this fight, there is the nano from and the primal from the side of the chads, and not too many ults on the side of the spark. But they have so much to push the card. They they need to win this hands out, and they do a good job by getting the pick on the dead stock first, but Yellow boops Chad into the line. Yellow's gotten so many boops with this far into the drink. But the Nano comes out onto the Primal. Typically don't want to see them sent out at the same time as Poise anteed and very low in the enemy team. And G3 gets two with 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 the bomb. Rodeo picks up Poi. And this is just all out brawl away from the point you would hope okay yellow does fall to the to the diva and the mccree shooting him down as they pick up second point two minutes left to spare this will be unlikely to finish with time should i say 
Especially if the Heckhounds put up another defense like they did there on second point. Boy jumps into the back lane past the Reinhardt shield. Too much value, but the Bob comes in, causing some split, but gets slept by Reed. Another two ults come out, and this is turning just into an old vest. It's a, a big anti comes out onto the back lane, but is very well beat it and secured and ultra just coming out left and right nano's on poi who's just in the back lane not giving deadstock any room to breathe as yellow picks up hulk and boy is still just causing so much so much denial of space in the back lane that he manages to get core before i was gonna say before getting picked but he hasn't even died yet there it is, he finally dies, but four, or the chance I picked up four in the in the time, and there is not a lot of space left. They they need to get, they get two, they managed to get two kills with Bob and are sustaining here with four meters away from the point being taken, and Hulk needs to hopefully get out before delaying, delaying his team anymore. But Hong Zhao do a good job of of holding off some of the massive plays being uh, being uh, being thrown out by Poi and the rest of his team, but this is the this will be the last fight here as we see Poi and the bomb going at the same time, and the bomb does manage to find the Farah who had ultimate. but Core does manage to get the res off as it's being traded evenly. Lights finds finds the Ana. The Far doesn't get any value with the old. Unfortunately, Chad managed to find the headshot. And Deadstock is the only one left on the point. Can the ball make it back in time? They stalled for long enough, but 1.1 seconds left. 1.1 seconds left. That that was close. <laughs> that was. Very, very close. <laughs> and uh, ju just getting the finish there at the end puts a lot of pressure onto the spark to do the same. And oh, especially with the time bank that's that they had left, even if they finish with a greater time bank, they if they run that bastion shard again. They could get all the way out to here again, and oh my god. Are we gonna see the same Bastion strat from the Spark? God damn it, it's in my brain. <laughs> from the Heckhounds. <laughs> Except with the Orisa this time, instead of the Reinhardt. Arguably, probably the better version of the comp, but. Whew. This, this this will be a sight to see, cause we we see the Zarya Hog on the Chad side. I will they be able to dismantle a bunker comp? Five, four, Who three, knows? Two, they are er, the Heckhounds are deciding to run out with the pharmacy instead of the Symmetra though, so they're just looking they're just looking a pirate ship with the pharmacy creating an off angle. And that is exactly what we're seeing so far. They're just getting free space, but Deadstock does pick up Rofty and Reed or Red. Just all the kills going in the favor of the Spark. Chad does manage to find the kill on the far, but will likely be rezzed. But he's the, the body's being camped by Chad fairly well. Does manage to get the res off, but it's still sort of okay. We are seeing. Just the pirate ship do its do its work. As lights does jump in on on the bastion in the back line again, and he's just getting all the support in the world. As this comp is kind of looking a bit unbreakable right now, because if they take too much, Deadstock just picks up three <laughs> off of the cart. Because it seems they're just putting so much effort into this bastion that. The far just destroys them when they're when they're trying to they're trying to focus down Bastion. Light's just throwing himself at the cart. Chad does manage to pick up the far again, but 
the rest does manage to come off. Lucky that far died on the cart, and that's where the body lay, but... Okay, we do see an adjustment. The Junkrat does come out. The G3 is in their back lane. Poi manages to grab the Bastion as everyone else is distracted. So a lot of their fighting power with a big nade coming out. As Chad picks up Cory. And the, the, the Amp Matrix does come out, but it's only the tanks left and we have to see a change here come out from the headcounts as they basically lose out on the Bastion comp in the same exact spot as the Chads did. But I believe they got through it a little bit faster. Yellow picked up another loop on the far end. This is disgusting. He's almost... <laughs> um, okay, aside from... They're not making the switches. They're gonna just jump back on the cart and go again. Yellow is being very impressive. And that's sort of a questionable ult. But they don't have the mercy to res it. The grab comes out. And the it just ult after ult is coming out again. Lights does throat. Jesus Christ. Rodeo picks up two with the flux as Gamer finds dead stock. Gamer picks up another one as he nano boosted D.Va. It's kind of scary as Lights is just going for the throat right now with the tank line. But they don't have anything to really deal with the far right now. As Chad comes back on the Hanzo, to just burn down shields and the tanks, but they're they're trading right here, and Boy goes off the edge with Deadstock. Oh, just so much going on. That <laughs> didn't even notice that G3 had actually made the swap onto the Diva and Boy onto the onto the Reinhardt as Yellow finds another one and is doing so well at just picking up these kills. Doesn't manage to get G3 while well, he's out of mech though. Chad comes back on the McCree now to pick to pick up both ends of the pharmacy. And it's just the Arisa Bastion left. And the Bongo coming out, but yeah, not not too much of the team left, and that ult kind of goes to waste. Are we are we seeing any swaps coming out? Yep, we're seeing the the Hog Sigma come back out for the for the spark with God damn it for the spark for the Heckhounds with uh, the McCree back in play. And Yellow picks up two with the pharmacy yet again. Yellow has the team like on his shoulders right now. Someone get him a chiropractor. And then so the the heck yellow finds another, but does get slept, but doesn't manage to die during the barrage, so that's a plus. Didn't die during suicide ult. As they look to finish on about two minutes and secure an even better time bank going here to the end, and despite these kills coming through, they're kind of all for naught. They do halt some of the the push that the that the spark were building on right there, but but it only eats up about 20 seconds of their time before they're ready to go here again, and they used a, a few ults to do it. We are seeing the double hit scan come out from from the Chads as they look to take out this pharmacy, but it's just rolling right now. See yellow over the top, he's getting very pressured out by the soldier, and just left below. Boy Shatter doesn't get much. As the Diva Bomb is launched over the top, this could be big. Does, doesn't manage to get anyone. As we see them kind of splitting up like two banks of three, Chad does manage to pick up Deadstock. As this fight just keeps on happening in and around the choke, not much progress happening. And Chad's in the back lane, but. Oh, unlucky. He does get two, but he is very lucky to have been saved by the boat right there. As <laughs> Yellow almost picked up another. Whew, and we're going into the last two minutes of of this map, and stuff is looking tricky again. As, as the Spark might just be happy to finish at the... to, to finish. <laughs> Are playing farther back as so they can let their hit scan deal with the far, but they're 
doing a very good job. And Yellow picks up a kill onto the Ana. And three are picked up by the Flux, but are saved by Immortality Field. Chat, uh, Rodeo does fall to Chad, and Poi gets a flank shatter in the back and lets Chad just clean up the kills. He does sacrifice his life, and damn, G3 does lose his back, so... Spark are recovering decently well from some fairly good plays there from, from the chats. <coughs> My throat's hurting. Alright, we will see about a... Oh yep, all six are back for both teams as G3 lobs the bomb, but it just gets thrown up against the wall as Red is just trying to push people off the cart as Poison the back line with with a nano and Yellow's getting multiple picks in the enemy's back line. And this map just may be finishable, finishable for the headcounts. They just have to clear off the squishies on the point. Boy does did manage to get the Ana, but it's gonna come down to the wire here. This Ana does get picked up, and ooh, 19 seconds left on the time bank. As both teams will now go up to a minute. With both teams running Bastion comp on the attack, this <laughs> this is this is just. Interesting. This is the closest map we've had so far, and it's a joy to watch. Now the question is, how do how the def how do the defending teams come out knowing that, or pretty much knowing that they're going to be facing against a bashing comp on attack? Ready for battle. Maybe. Or not? Are they gonna flip it up, hoping that they've expected a Bastion comp, and just try and punish them? Now, from the defending side, we will see the Hog Sigma with the Far and the Reaper come out this time. Interesting to not run any sort of long-range hit scan. I mean, it, it does make sense if they are expect if they were expecting the Bastion, though. But they might regret it here when when Chad is just pumping damage into their into their pharmacy. But I don't know. Yellow's a tricky one. But how did that happen? The Mercy gets. Just falls off the edge. Deadstock does pick up Poi. But still. Just that process of, process of events is how. Poi does get res back up and is immediately back into the fight. Rodeo is sort of just throwing in chunks of damage. So like, there's no shielding. This is one. He's just building with his ult. Deadstock now going into the back line with Yellow there to meet him. And they just clean up Chad and Hulk. But Poi is in the back line. Much of the team having noticed. Lights out does pick up Core and Yellow picks up Poi. Reed falls to Lights out and we're looking at 3v3 or 2v3 here on the point. Yellow still is in here but the tanks are as well. And cool. The grab comes out from G3 and the anti nade. Oh, the anti nade. Killed them there. Deadstock just stalling as a little bit of connection error, but stalled as long as he could there on the point. They don't have any ults to prevent a retake here, but are the Hatcounts even gonna try for a retake? It doesn't look like they're gonna try for a retake. They're just gonna try and hold second point as long as they could. Or as long as they can. And they did very well at that here the first time around. Red gets the pick on the lights with a questionable TP choice. As he looks to just blow everyone off the point with Reed falling behind, or Yellow falling behind him with the barrage. And pushing up back, Deadstock with the Blossom as he almost gets Primal off the side. Chat just, and is that a little bit of a Charlie Niner? A little bit of letter number combination. 
boy sort of just walks off the point. Initiating match. Very interesting things. <laughs> but the cart does make it only to halfway out the bridge, so this is still... Uh, this is still very winnable for Chung for Chengdu. Question of comps yet rises yet again, though. Ready for As we will see the Bastion comp come out for the Hackhounds, and we will still will still see this double bubble. Our full dive tanks come out for for the Chads. But the McCree comes out in place of in place of the Reaper, and we actually see the pharmacy on on this side of, of defense instead of the ash. I believe it was an ash they ran before. So major presence here needed from Deadstock and Yellow to get their team to the end and and keep them keep their hopes alive in the series because it is possible still but it's also very possible for for Chengdu to just to end it all right here you know putting in some poke damage but Chad has to back off so much and respect the pharmacy they, ex they execute a very well coordinated jump onto the onto the bastion as Two still go in the way of of Hung Zhao, and the Bastion is res. And this bar duel just taking place in the sky. Who will come out on top? And so, or De Dead Suck will just clean up all of them. That works too. And they have to contest here. Or the the chats just they have to play another map. I don't know why they're holding so far back. <laughs> the points up here. Okay, they dive onto the bashing. Do they blow? They blow him up again, and manage to deny the res. Chat the chats pick up three, and Reed was anti, so he's very very low. And this might be it. Rodeo gets slept away from the point, and the Chads finish off the series three to zero. Very well executed dive to finish off the series. Chad gets to play the game. It's just melting people. The microwave is out. And Heck hounds on <laughs> is on the menu. And there you have it. <laughs> the Chengdu Chads <laughs> win the game today, and they bring their record up to an even two and two and knock the spark. I said it again here at the end. They knocked the Heckhounds down to 3 and 1, delivering their first loss of this season. Um, I, I don't know who to give out man of the match to. Yeah. I, Chengdu, you've got it. <laughs> you, you've got it all. You all played so well. Especially there at the end, you all came together and just executed the dives perfectly. I can't pick one out of all of you. So, it was a good game. There should be... There will either be another match tomorrow. Or there might be another match tomorrow. There will most definitely be a match on Saturday and possibly Sunday. And we will see you guys then, either on another stream or the official mal twitch stream but thanks for showing up follow if you haven't and we are gonna call it there no interviews for me because i am i am shy but <laughs> uh, again 
just congrats to the whole Chengdu team. Played very, very well. Hung Zhao, you looked way better there at the end than you did in the first two maps. So just congratulations, and we'll see you guys next time.